can we actually get this chain completely clean? But we want to see if we can clean up this chain. There it is. We got some sour milk here. Okay, so hopefully the lactic acid in it, maybe we'll eat it some rust. And this is the citric acid. Hydrogen peroxide, 3% white distilled vinegar, some baking soda, and of course the control, which will have nothing. So we'll get to see what the changes will be. Okay, so this sour milk one, or spoiled milk, is going to be super stinky. Oh, oh it's so chunky. <laughs> We're just going to do a little bit there. <coughs> Woo! Alright, so there's the spoiled milk. Citric acid. I hope you can see. There we go. Citric acid. I'm just gonna ballpark it. We'll say um, we'll say that's a tablespoon. We'll do a couple just to make sure it's nice and strong. The base to any of the powder experiments are going to be uh, water, so water is quite corrosive as we know. So there's that. Stir it up. I'll get back to that. Hydrogen peroxide. This is 3%. It's not very strong. And I'm not thinking it's going to do a whole lot because hydrogen peroxide loses its potency when, when exposed to air. That's why it's in this brown container. Vinegar. We got white distilled vinegar. And in the comments below, go ahead and make your guess to what you think will work the best. So that's, that's the vinegar. Baking soda. Let's let's do oops. No, we didn't, didn't get it, just the outside. Okay. Let's do the same, like two tablespoons. So there's one. Roughly two. Okay. We're going to make the base to that one also water. We'll come back to that. And of course, the control will have nothing. It's even got two holes in the bottom, just in case something happens to get in there. Let's start with the hydrogen peroxide. And if you take a peek in there, I see some bubbles. I see some, see some rust kind of just floating around in there. Doesn't look like a whole lot happened, but let's take it out. Let's see what we got. Um, as far as movement goes, well, that one's still rusted. Shut. Pretty much rusted stiff looks pretty much the same. Let's give it a little wipe. Let's see if we get anything coming off here. Pretty much nothing is coming off. You get what you get there. That was 3% hydrogen peroxide. Not really much of a change. Let's compare it to our control. Looks like it tried to do something, but it just wasn't enough. What do you think? Hydrogen peroxide. Alright, now let's go for the vinegar. Vinegar, same kind of thing happened. There's some floaties, some actually pretty large chunks of rust down in there, more so than the hydrogen peroxide. So let's take a closer look at it. This was distilled white vinegar. Looks like a lot of rust is actually coming off onto the gloves. It's pretty surprising. Distilled white vinegar. I actually think I see some some metal coming through. Like I see a gray under part to it. Well, I'll be darned. Look at this. 
distilled vinegar two days two days in there soaking it is raining a little bit but I'm gonna wipe this off and I'll get back alright guys so I went ahead and gave it a little scrub with one of my park tool chain brushes and uh, this is pretty pretty amazing it's actually almost the it's it's pretty much down to the metal here's the control which we did nothing to and then there's the distilled white vinegar that's pretty good and that's two whole days soaking in distilled vinegar for some reason the other side didn't uh, come off as well I'm not sure why if this was the side face down or the side face up but it did a pretty good job this link it was a little bit stuck but it seems like if it's sat in there for longer you might actually have a chance with this with uh, distilled white vinegar so I'm gonna go ahead and stick it back in and uh, see if we can get any better results from that this next one I was extremely curious about but totally grossed out with it is the spoiled milk now I'm not quite sure what the idea is you can't even see it in there we've probably officially made cheese and uh, so let's get it out and see what we got Okay, so initially um, it stinks. We've got some cheese <laughs> down in there. Uh, not really seeing too much of a difference in color. Um, let's try and give it a little scrub and see if we get any rust coming off at least. So we can get a good wipe off in here. Um, not really much happening. It just, you get cheese in the links. It's probably not an ideal method to clean your rust. So I'm gonna have to say no, even though we haven't even really side compared it to it. This is the control on the left and the spoiled milk on the right. Really not a difference at all. All right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so our next one is citric acid. I had high hopes for this one because it's just such a um, strong concoction. It was uh, two tablespoons, heaping tablespoons of citric acid, and the rest was water. I was a little bit worried about the water mixture because, well, it's water, and water creates rust. But let's go ahead and look inside and see what we got. Again, lots of rust deposits in there. It's looking pretty hopeful. The citric acid would be comparable to using a soda. Now, <laughs> this looks pretty amazing. Um, again, here is our control. And here is the citric acid. Now, that pretty much looks like a brand new chain. And this is citric acid I have used for preserving uh, cut fruit. Um, it's totally edible in small quantities. It, if you use too much, you know, it has a possibility of damaging your teeth, but so does soda. So, with that said, it did quite an amazing job taking off the rust. Wouldn't you agree? Here's the control on the left and the citric acid experiment to the right. I don't see any other damage to it. It doesn't look like it was eating it away. This link here is still, it's still locked up. But if you are going for looks, and you could probably work on that, maybe bang it with a hammer, get it moving, there is potential here for citric acid to do an amazing job. So, well done, citric acid. The next one we're going to look at is baking soda. I didn't really have high hopes for the baking soda because, well, it's just, it's pretty much a base to anything. It doesn't really have much going on for it unless mixed with 
it's a vinegar or citric acid. There's not really much going on with it. It's a great cleaning product, but only usually on its own for a light um, abrasive cleaning. But let's take a look. I don't see any, not a whole lot of rust in there. It's not a whole lot going on, so I'll just take the chain out. And that's pretty much what I was expecting to see. Not a whole lot of rust coming off. Very bumpy. Yep, not a whole lot going on with the baking soda, and that's kind of what I was figuring. Because there's really not whole, not much of a reaction going on here. So, no to baking soda. Well guys, let's get a last look at our winners. I think we know who it is. I think we know what's going to work best on rust. Let's, so let's get them out. What's nice about these products is that they're all pretty much natural and they're really not going to hurt you. <laughs> and, uh, or the environment mostly. Uh, of course, if you drink spoiled milk, it'll make you have a bad day. But generally speaking, these are pretty mild, earth-friendly products. And it's not going to be a big deal if they get dropped on the ground or, you know, somehow an animal gets to it or whatever. So the, generally speaking, they're pretty safe um, compared to some harsher products that are out there. Uh, so that's a good idea to, uh, that's a good that's something to keep in mind when you're uh, doing these sort of projects. Taking a second look at this, I would even dare to say that citric acid did a whole lot better than vinegar. But if you had vinegar and you were in a pinch, citric acid you might have to buy at a um, health food store or maybe a feed store or even probably better yet online. So it's not totally readily available, but some people have it. And uh, there's the other side of the vinegar. So definitely the citric acid is the winner in this category, which could be a Coke. You might want to try Coke because <laughs> that is present in soda, citric acid. But that did a pretty darn good job taking off the rust. Again, here's the control and the citric acid. Not bad. Please leave a like, please comment, please subscribe to the channel if you like seeing this type of stuff, any sort of restoration projects or any kind of testing you want to see done, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to do this. This was really fun. It's bike related and restoration related, so let me know what you think. Thanks for hanging out and stay groovy.